this is Professor Cummings and wanted to do a video here that covers a quiz that we just had. This will be the first quiz and this is one of the questions on it. Make sure that I'm going to go through it so that everybody can get an understanding as to how this problem actually works. So if you remember this problem, it was just two beams with an applied load, two relative applied loads, one that is 2,600 pounds. The beam is 13 feet in both cases. It simply supported A and B, C and D, and uh, like I said, one has uh, 2,600 pounds, and it is 10 feet from point B, and that means it's 3 feet from point A. The other has a 220 pound per foot uniform distributed load that goes over the, the length of the beam. Now, the question was, Based on the images below, compare the support reaction at both A and, and C. <clears throat> so by that, what the, the options were is that reaction C is greater than reaction A. Reaction C is equal to reaction A. And then reaction C is actually less than reaction A. Now, some of you may be able to figure this out just by looking at it, maybe doing the math in your head real quick. But let's go ahead and go through it and find out what the hard numbers are. So the first thing we have to do is set the problem up so that we are all on the same page in terms of the sign. So we're going to deal with a put in a coordinate system. And we're only going to focus in on one of the images at a time. So we'll look at the image on the left. And then we'll go back and solve for the image on the right and we'll compare the final answers. So when we set up our coordinate system, we're just going to use a conventional system where going to the right is positive, going up is positive, and going counterclockwise in terms of our moment is positive. So we know there's going to be a support reaction for a simple support of RA and RB. And uh, because it's a simple support, there isn't going to be an X component to either of these reactions that we're going to have to solve. Simple, simple reaction just has a component in the, in the Y, a reaction in the Y. So if we take a moment going about B, we can eliminate an unknown from the equation. You know, the distance from B to B is zero, so that just makes that one drop out, the support reaction drop out. So we'll, that means we're going to create a moment from the 2600 applied load, 2600 pound applied load, that is going to be going counterclockwise and a moment that's being created by the support reaction at A that's going clockwise. So we got a load that's positive and a load that is moving in the negative direction. Okay. So when we look at this, the sum of moments about B we have 2,600 pounds times 10 feet. You know, so the distance is 10 feet away. Minus the reaction, support reaction at A times the full 13 foot distance of the beam. So we just multiply 2,600 times 10. We end up with 26,000 foot pounds minus RA times 13 feet. Now we solve for RA, the one unknown in the equation. We end up with 2,600 foot-pounds over 13 feet. We can cancel the units. The feet cancel out, and we end up with 2,000 pounds at reaction A. So we know what reaction A is for certain. You know, So we also know that if you look at this, you can see that the position of that applied load between A and B dictates what the reaction is. You know, if this had been all the way over, that would have changed the problem. If it had been less than 10 feet, that would have also changed the problem. So this is a function of the distance, the way that it creates that moment that dictates what that reaction is going to be. So now let's solve for the one on the left with the distributed load. All right. So again, now since this is a distributed load, you know, pounds per foot over 13 feet, we're going to have to figure out what the effective uh, 
concentrated load is going to be based on that dis distribution and the length. So the way we figure that one out is we take what the distributed load, pounds per foot, times the full length at 13 feet. And as you can see, the feet cancel out. Multiply 220 times 13. We end up with 2,860 pounds. So we have an effective load of 200, or excuse me, 2,860 pounds. And it locates, because it's a uniform distributed load, right at the midpoint at 6.5 feet. So there we've got an effective load right there in the middle. So there he is located right there in the middle, but it is greater than the 2,600 pounds. So you'll see how this is going to affect the, uh, the outcome of the problem. All right, so again, simply supported beam in both cases, and we're going to, you know, so there's a reaction at C and a support reaction at D. So what we can do is the same thing we did for the other side, which is take a moment about D. If we take a moment about D, you know, the distance from D to D is zero. So that drops that one out of the equation and we'll end up with a reaction moment based on the 13 feet going around clockwise and the effective load, which is 2,860 pounds going counterclockwise. So this one's going again in the positive direction and boy that's a messy positive and this one is going in the negative direction so we take the sum of moments about d it's going to equal to zero because we're in static equilibrium 2860 pounds times 6.5 feet it's at the midpoint minus the react support reaction of c times 13 feet we multiply that out it's 18,590 foot pounds minus the support reaction at C times 13 feet. Now we can just solve for R sub C. We end up with 1,430 pounds for the reaction at C. And it looks like I have a typo here. That should say reaction at, at C. All right, so the reaction at C. So, 1,430 pounds. So, you can see you looking at our original question. The reaction at C is less than the reaction at A. And it's mostly or primarily because it is located at the midpoint. Or exactly because it's located, not located at the midpoint. It's, this one is biased all the way over to the, uh, the support reaction of A. So that was just a short video. Uh, again, this is Professor Cummings, uh, and I will talk to you soon.